Welcome back, dear listeners from Scratch That. Welcome back, dear listeners, to The Waiting Warriors Podcast, the show that brings you inspiring stories, meaningful conversations, and heartfelt insights from military spouses and significant others. It's been a while, but we are here uh, to reconnect with you and continue our mission to share important military spouse stories and resources. As um, many of you know, it's been a challenging couple of years for me. Life took a very unexpected turn, and our son James was stillborn, and I had to take a step back to heal, grieve, and find my way through the storm. Uh, During this time, your support and understanding has meant the world to me, and I am deeply grateful for so many kind messages, your patience, and the love you've shown. Now, with a heart that's healing, um, though honestly never the same, I am excited to bring this podcast back, and I have plans to make it even better than before. I have done, um, well, I had done a dozen or so interviews before we lost James. And since the guests and the content were so good, I can't not publish them. But for my mental health, I'm not going to edit them the same as I normally would. Um, So please forgive any mistakes, any little weird things. But I am excited for you to hear these amazing military spouses And then season two of the Waiting Warriors podcast will be coming shortly. Enjoy the interview. Hey, Waiting Warriors out there. Welcome to another week on the Waiting Warriors podcast. I'm your host, Michelle Bowler, and I'm really excited for today's guest because she's someone who's not always willing to be on podcasts, and that's an introvert. And I ask introverts to come on the podcast often but they're introverts, so they don't want to, which totally makes sense. But I'm excited to get your point of view. Welcome to the show, Lane. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, so like I said, we were talking earlier, and we're like, you know, you hear a lot from the extrovert military spouse because they're extrovert, and they're willing to talk, and they love to talk. And that's not bad. Like, we have some amazing interviews that I think are still super helpful to everybody. But as far as social situations, which military spouses are put into often, mm-hmm. your your point of view isn't always, I don't know, like just talked about. So then, yeah. so then everybody feels like alone, which is lame because <laughs> you're all out there. And I know I feel like that sometimes. Like I think I'm a mix. I don't. Mm-hmm. Know, I've never really taken the tests. Maybe I should. Maybe I would have less like... I can like put on the front of being an extrovert, Uh but it's super draining. And then I just like go home and just crash and I just have to like be in my own little bubble for like a week. Yeah. That's crazy. Especially (laughs) if every however many years you have to restart and and Mm -hmm. like you can just find your people and then stay in a comfortable flow. So, so maybe describe more what, what is, what is being an introvert to you? (laughs) So so ridiculous, but what, but honestly, like, what does it feel like to you? Like you, and I know you've recently been through a, been through one of the transitions, right? Like Mm -hmm. you did, you just got married, right? Yeah. So I got married a little over a year ago. We just had our one year anniversary. Of course he's deployed. So (laughs) we'll celebrate it when he gets back, but I didn't get to move out here until September last year. So we got married in January. I was going to move here in March, but that's when everything happened. And there's just this whole Like I could write a book about my whole 2020 just in like trying to move down here to live with my husband, like absolutely insane. Mm -hmm. But finally moved here in September, beginning of September, but he was still doing some training out in San Diego. 
So he would only be home on like Saturday, Sunday, and then leave again during the week. And then he deployed middle of November-ish. So we lived together for like, you know, two months, <laughs> a month and a half. <laughs> Out of the first year. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. And I'd actually be really, really curious. Someday I need to like do this poll or intent survey. Maybe we'll just do a poll on Instagram of like how long <laughs> did you live with your spouse out of the first like year or two mm -hmm. versus how long were they gone? Because how long did I, I got him for three months and then he was gone. So yeah, I think I'm at like, I was at four, maybe, maybe five months. Oh, shoot. I haven't counted in a long time. For the first year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, we, we should do that poll. Yeah, that'd be really interesting to see. So I made a joke, like on our year anniversary, I was like, they always say the first year is the hardest, but like, I don't think this is what they meant. <laughs> yeah, that'd, that'd be another interesting thing. Like the civilian kind of marital mm -hmm. norms that like, the first year's the hardest because you're learning about each other and how to live with each other. But it's mm -hmm. like, what is that in military years? Time, yeah. <laughs> so is it the first three to five years? Right. Or, <laughs> but then you still have to be married. But that that's a different subject. Of, that would be an interesting podcast to do. I don't know who I'd do that with. Who'd be able to like give us expert advice on it? <laughs> But so you just moved, you finally have gotten there, but it's a pandemic and you're an introvert. What? Yes. <laughs> and I have social anxiety on top of that. So okay. that's what, been what fun. Does, what does that mean for you? Because I don't, I don't mean that in like a, okay, explain it to me because I think you're faking it. Right, I, right, right. I think those terms are being used more often, which I think is awesome. But at the same time, like does everybody know what that means for each other and does that make sense like yeah no that totally makes sense because yeah. it's like like I'm pregnant and in prenatal and postnatal all the time and people talk about like prenatal and postnatal depression I've been this is a fifth pregnancy and I'm still trying to figure out what that even means you know what I mean? like <laughs> yeah it's used all the Everyone's time experience is just different so yeah. as far as the introvert part goes like I said, like I can like be outgoing and stuff, but it's just so draining and literally takes all of my energy. And then I just like, I can't, I like have to just like go sleep for like a week or something. I used to be so shy that people did not think that I knew how to speak. Like they genuinely did not know that I could speak. And I was probably like eight years old or something. And they just like, didn't question it. Cause I only spoke around my immediate family or close family friends or like anyone who I was really comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And there was this one time, I think I was at like a Christian charter school thing. And there was a ladies conference. And my teacher was going to that. So my, they asked my mom to be the substitute for like a couple days. So my mom was there. So then I was talking and everyone was like, she can talk. My mom's like, yeah, she doesn't shut up. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. But they genuinely had no idea that I could, I could physically form words and put them into sentences yeah but then you know as time you kind of like goes on you kind of like grow out of that but what really did it for me was I got a job in retail okay <laughs> and so that just like made me like just come out of my shell a little bit more uh -huh. so that's when like I figured out like oh I can like put on the front of being an extrovert you know like I can interact with people and stuff it is just mm -hmm. so draining but then you throw in the social anxiety on top of it. And it's just like, I'm terrified of it. And it gives, I'm just like overthinking absolutely everything. And it's just like, well, what if this goes wrong or this goes wrong? Or like, oh, they're going to hate me. They're going to think I'm weird. Like I won't get invited back again. Just like all the thoughts just spiraling, spiraling out of control. And like, so like you just put them together and it's just like a hot mess. It takes a lot of energy <laughs> to like go out and, speak to someone <laughs> yeah 
So what did you do? Like you just moved somewhere. Do you just, do you just prefer to be alone? Like, is that, you know, cause I feel, sometimes I feel bad that like I say, you need your tribe. You've mm-hmm. got to like form your support group, which I stand by, but I don't want to dismiss the really intense feelings Mm -hmm. because while it may like I may be shy and it takes a lot to like I have to really bolster myself up to like talk to people and talk about myself and like try to really connect with them but I don't like I'm my heart isn't like beating super fast I'm not sweating and I'm not like sleeping for a week after Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I get super shaky too. And then I'm just like sitting on my hands because I'm like, they're going to know I'm freaking out on the inside. (laughs) Yeah. So do you like, do you want to have, you know, your tribe? Absolutely. Do you feel like that's actually something that would benefit you and that you need? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, it absolutely is, especially during deployment. But I've, as I, like, I am an introvert and I value my alone time like no other, but if you're just alone by yourself all the time, like, you'll go crazy. Like, you still need that human interaction. It's just, like, the initial, like, getting to the place where you have that group, that's the hard part. But once you have it, it's like, yes, you'll still spend your alone time, but then you also have that, like, tribe to fall back on, rely on just spend some time with but just like getting their process is so or can be so difficult and super draining yeah what was it like this this last transition in PCS and moving in September oh my gosh so this is extra crazy because where I grew up it's like 65 degrees year round it never gets Pismo Beach California it's on the coast I grew yeah up in California too so that's okay cool. yeah <laughs> But it's like it's 60 degrees and everybody's like, oh, no, we need yeah. our focus. Like, yeah. I literally was always in a sweatshirt year round. Like, Christmas time is when it would get hot randomly. Like, it's just so weird. But, like, hot for me was, like, 80 degrees. Mm-hmm. Well, I just moved to the desert in California in the dead of summer. <laughs> we were moving my stuff in. It's 114 degrees outside. <laughs> so... That was even more because I'm also like so sensitive to the sun and the sun is so draining and the heat is so draining, especially since I'm not used to it. Yeah. So that made it a little extra difficult for me to like yeah. get out. But before I moved out here, and I don't even know how, I think the my husband's unit deployment readiness coordinator, I think she somehow found me on Facebook or something and added me to one of the wives pages or the... Yeah, I want to say the unit's wives page, spouse's page. Okay. And so that was like the first step. And then some people were sharing some of the other pages that are here local. So I kind of like got on the pages even before I came out here. So then I was starting to like kind of see some of the names and that sort of stuff. And then I had seen someone post about there's a kickball league here for the spouses. And each unit has their own team. So someone had posted about the kickball team. And I was like, oh, that sounds fun. But I wasn't out here yet. I was like, oh, that sounds fun. Like, that'd be kind of cool to, like, get into. I love sports and just getting out and just running around and stuff. But I was crazy nervous. And obviously, like, I wasn't here yet or anything. Once I finally moved here, And again, my husband was out in San Diego doing some training. So I'm just sitting on my couch alone. And I'm like, okay, like, this has been great. But like, I've got to get out of the house. Like, Mm -hmm. it's the dead of summer. There's nothing to do here, really. It's like, COVID's happening. So everything's shut down. Anything that there was to do is all shut down. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of gorgeous hiking trails. But like, you're not going to do that in summer. Like, that's a winter time activity. (laughs) Not unless you want a heat case or something. Mm -hmm. And so I finally, like, I saw it again, it popped up. And like, I personally feel like it was God. It just like popped up, like when I was in that right mindset to be able to be like, I should just message her. And it took me quite a while. Like I typed out a message to her and sat there and I was just like, should I send this? Should I not? Like, does this sound right? Like, 
what is she gonna think about this? Like all sorts mm-hmm. of things just running through my Let's mind. And finally, it a few times. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Finally, I just sent it, and then I was like, "Okay, just don't look at your phone. Don't look at your phone. Like, go do something. Just like distract yourself." And then she messaged back, and she was like, "Oh yeah, absolutely." And I was just like, "Oh, thank God." <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm like, okay, step one done. <laughs> but then. Since my husband was only here on the weekends, I didn't have my ID yet, so I couldn't get on base. Oh. And I also didn't have a real ID, which initially was a problem because the commanding general at the base here was like, no, you got to have the real ID, even though it wasn't effective until October. And then it got pushed out because of COVID. And so I was just like, well, shoot, like, what do I don't have a real ID? I can't go to the DMV, like all that sort of stuff. I was just like, I don't know what to do. And then he was only here on the weekend, so we couldn't go into the deer's office to get me my ID or, like, he couldn't, like, get me a pass or anything like that. And so the coach that I had talked to, she was able to, like, sponsor me so I could go on base for practices. (laughs) And then she moved some practices to a field off base so that it was easier for me. I -hmm. live in military housing, but not on base. like outside I've never heard of that there's nothing I'm pretty sure it's only a thing here because there's no it's the desert it's the middle of nowhere there's literally like nothing so they had to like create more housing for yeah. people so yeah because no one else has ever heard of it either unless they've been here so yeah. I'm like I think that's just a here thing <laughs> we'll have to see okay so you're an introvert you get social anxiety but you had to uh, ask for the ride even huh yeah I had to be like okay well I don't have my ID so like I felt like I was just like pestering her asking all these Mm -hmm. questions I'm like I don't have my ID though like how can I get on base and then she's like okay I'll call the gate and like all this sort of stuff so then I had to get to the gate and then I had to go in and talk to more people which I was just like oh my gosh like I'm so nervous and then she like the person inside was like lecturing me like you have to get your ID I'm like I know but like He's, I can't. <laughs> so I'm like trying to just like, it's okay. You're fine. Like you're not doing anything wrong. You know that like, mm-hmm. it's like op at Walmart or something. You just like, and you're not buying anything. Just like casually walk out. And it's like, oh, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> Was it all worth it? Has yeah, it all absolutely. Worth it? Like I showed up to that first practice and like within like five minutes, like I knew like in my heart, like, these are friends that I'm going to have for the rest of my life. Like just something absolutely clicked and it was amazing. And they have been an absolute lifesaver through all of this that's been going on, like COVID moving out here, my first deployment married and like all that sort of stuff. It's been an absolute godsend and I'm so beyond grateful for them. Why? Like what, what, I don't know. Do do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, because I think I think specifics help people, especially when we're struggling. Like, yes, like, because <laughs> I know, like, even for me, like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know what I am. I don't know if I'm an introvert or shy or whatever. But it's easy to get in your head of this is going to be hard and this is uncomfortable and my heart is racing and I feel like I gotta like pump myself up just to send this message. So, you know, what it, I, I know I asked myself and I'm, sh- I'm sure people with more extreme social anxieties and stuff ask themselves, like, is, is this even going to be worth it? Like, why, mm-hmm. why do we even do this? So for me personally, it like, it got me out of the house the three days a week, like, cause we have practices two nights and then games on Sundays. So it got me out of the house because I literally had nothing and no one here. I mean, I had, I have church, but there's no one in my specific church around my age. Mm. And so it's all like really young or older or stuff. And so I'm just like, okay, I'm just here. So it got me exposed to more people around my age. And then also people who are going through the exact same thing that I am. Cause since each team is by the unit, all their spouses are also deployed. Right. And so we're all going through it together. And in fact, on the day that my husband deployed, I think it had gotten split up into like three different days, like three different groups were leaving yeah. three different days. Yeah. And so my husband was in the last one. And on that day, 
we had a get together, the kickball team had a get together at one of the girls' houses and we just like had mimosas and just like hung out. And it was, I was so grateful for it because I knew like if I didn't have church that morning and if I didn't have that, I would just be sitting on my couch like crying and like not, you know, just like having a meltdown. And so it got me like out and to be able to do something. And then we're all able to hang out. We're all going through the same thing. And I have within the whole team, like I have a group of my closer friends and we went out. Well, when was it? Last week sometime. (laughs) So the trip to Walmart, it's like a 30 minute drive. And that's the closest (laughs) thing to Walmart. So whenever anyone is going out to like Walmart or like even further anywhere everyone's just like hey who wants to come with me because we don't want to make the trip alone right and so um three of us got together and we spent three hours in Walmart just like wandering around (laughs) shopping and having a great time (laughs) and it sounds so weird like who spends three hours in Walmart it is a super center so like you know that helps a little bit (laughs) but like just like being able to spend time with people who like get me and are going through the same thing and we're all able to just communicate like hey like have you heard from your husband like what what's going on that on that route and whatnot and just all the different things and me and my husband he forgot to download whatsapp before he left the country so (laughs) we really haven't been able to talk and like other people are like talking all the time and I'm like okay cool (laughs) oh honey I'm sorry (laughs) he remembered once he got to Japan and then it's too late though because he has to like get the text code and whatnot and I'm yeah. just like, of course you did <laughs> but it's okay because it just makes that time that we do get to talk that much more special so I was yeah. listening to one of the other podcasts and I can't remember which one it was it was towards the beginning I'm very OCD so I started at the beginning I and uh, <laughs> and um talking about like on purpose not talking to Mm -hmm. your husband every single day and I'm like that is honestly the best thing because if you do you're just like okay like (laughs) I could be watching my show right now like (laughs) do you want to know what happened on the Gilmore Girls today (laughs) no (laughs) why not (laughs) exactly for the third deployment or separation shocker that's what I'm (laughs) <laughs> you know what's you know what's fun though it's like you said you know who spends three hours at walmart that's like your spouse is deployed and i mean i think it's the same whether you have kids or you don't like three hours doing anything with your friends mm-hmm. like yeah let's ride on the little tricycles down the aisle on Walmart or just looking <laughs> at random stuff. Like I think it's just important. And I don't know if like game changer, or, I don't know if game changer or lifesaver is the right word, but like, that's what it is just yeah. to be with your mm-hmm. people and exactly. be with anybody who who understands and even just anybody who's you know your age and that you're connecting with like you know whether you're at Walmart or once it's cooler you're going on a hike on those beautiful hiking trails or playing kickball or what whatever it is that you want to do like don't judge what you're doing because at least you're not at home right exactly like I'd just be at home just like watching a show in my pjs like stuffing my face with chips so at least I'm out getting that social yeah fix for the week (laughs) blind the chips right like yes (laughs) yeah wait I wonder I wonder how much how many things we stop ourselves from doing just because we're judging the activity or like having the social anxieties Mm -hmm. what it is like you know should I spend my time going through Walmart or should I you know what are they gonna think by me just reaching out and saying hey I'm brand new I don't have an ID so Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah and (laughs) I'm brand new I don't know anything around here Mm -hmm. can I be on your kickball team like I love I love this story so much. (laughs) (laughs) 
because because you had so many reasons to not exactly like and old me would literally have never done that like I would not have sent the message to be like no like I just don't want to do it but I just like something inside me was just like just do it like what what's gonna go wrong like they say no you can't join the team then like okay and you just move on and so I was just like just do it and finally I just did it and then it has been the biggest blessing ever yeah we give each other rides to the airport I flew back home the day after my husband (laughs) or not back home the day after my husband deployed I flew out to Missouri to go spend Thanksgiving with my sister Mm -hmm. and then I flew back here and then I drove (laughs) I didn't want to be in my house alone so I was planning to stay, do laundry, and repack because November, December in Missouri is very different than November, December on the coast in California. <laughs> and I just I couldn't be in my house. So I just turned around and drove right up there that same day. And then we got a heat wave and all I had was sweaters. <laughs> It was a mess, but I went back home, spent Christmas with my family and my in-laws and all that sort of stuff, and then came back, and then I was ready. I think also with my dog, I had left my dog at my in-laws from the pre-deployment leave because I knew I was flying to Missouri, and I can't fly with him because he's he's too big, yeah. but if I had my dog with me, I might have been able to stay when I got back, but just like in the completely empty house. Like When I first walked in, I was like, oh, it's so good to be home. But then I had to run some errands and then I was just like, I don't want to go back in the house. Yeah. (laughs) So I was like, okay, I'm just going to leave now. But then I came back and I was very ready to come back, especially after not having like my own room or bathroom or space or anything like that. I was just like, okay, I'm ready to just go back to my own house, my own uncomfortable bed, you know. But at least you knew, like, you had people. Yes. Yes. And given rides to the airport. And then we had get togethers, like, all throughout. We had a, it was supposed to be a wine and crafts event together as a kickball team. We were going to decorate our um, team's poster mm, a couple weeks ago. And it ended up just being like a potluck hang out turned into like never have I ever and we're all just like having a grand old time didn't even do the banner we're just like yeah whatever (laughs) we're good (laughs) somebody will do it that time yeah it got Um, done eventually (laughs) I love that has it gotten to a point I don't know if this is like a weird question where you're like hey I could host something or you invite do you know what I mean Mm -hmm. oh you are getting comfortable yes they are literally like when Last week, I think it was the day before the Walmart trip, Mm -hmm. a group of us after our kickball practice, a couple of the girls who have kids were like, hey, we're going to go to Sonic. Like, do you want to go? And it's, again, it's out past Walmart. So it's another 30 minute drive one way. And so we're like, yeah. So we got, I picked up my dog because I didn't, I felt bad leaving him here alone that long. So I got my dog and then I had one of the girls in my car and then they were in their car and we all drove out to Sonic and then we're like, why don't we go back to her house? So we went back and then we ate our food and then played Just Dance till like 10 o'clock at night and just like having a grand old time. And it was a blast. <laughs> a good life. Yes. Good and then good. I'm wanting, so <laughs> Taco Tuesday is like my religion. <laughs> <laughs> Like I, I don't have a religion as in it's more, it's like a relationship with Christ, you know, that sort of stuff. But Taco Tuesday is my religion. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and when I was back home, my in-laws every Tuesday, like my mother-in-law, she like made all the stuff for tacos and we had tacos and this is the best. Like it never gets old, even though you have it every single week, like they're just as amazing every single time. Mm-hmm. But I don't like to cook at all when it's just me like I feel like I'm wasting so much and like when my husband's here like I'm totally fine cooking I'm like oh yeah yeah, yeah. we'll cook you know make mac and cheese like whatever but when I'm by myself I'm like I'll just make a sandwich I'll just make a sandwich (laughs) or bowl of cereal so Mm -hmm. I really want to start with the kickball or at least with some of the girls like have taco Tuesday at my house and then yeah (laughs) like my tacos (laughs) Do it, and I want to hear how it goes. Okay, so I will. I will. That sounds awesome. We should all do that Taco Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. 
It's the best decision you will ever make. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's. <laughs> oh, yes. Sorry. I thought no, I you're good. Um, okay, last question. What's your key to thriving you want to share with your fellow waiting warriors? Okay, I have two. I've been thinking about this ever since mm-hmm. you asked me to come on. So the first one, just do it. Like, I know it can be super intimidating, but just send the message. Like, just do it. Just reach out. It doesn't matter. Like, there might be a no, but like, that's their loss. Like, just Mm -hmm. do it. Like, you never know what will come from it. And also, this is going to sound super, super cheesy, but it's what you make it. Like, I got, I was all excited, like, knowing, like, my husband's in the Marines. Although, like, we didn't start dating until after he was in the Marines, but I got all excited, like, oh, like, I'll get to, like, travel around, you know, like, all these cool places, and then he gets stationed in the desert in the state I grew up in, so Mm -hmm. I'm, like, cool, (laughs) and then it's just, you know, it's a hot mess, but one of my coaches, the first season of kickball, she told me, she's, like, it's super cheesy, but life's what you make it, and it really, really is, like, if you just have a positive outlook on it, and, like, you're reaching out, and you're trying, like, you're gonna have a great time, no matter what, like, if you're just constantly looking for the negative, then you're going to have a bad time. So you just got to just do it and life's what you make it. <laughs> just it sounds make so good. life good. <laughs> yes, exactly. I like it. Those are, that's a good combo too. Because yeah. it does go in hand. Like mm-hmm. if you are too afraid to make the life positive, then you just got to do it. <laughs> you just got to do it. <laughs> really nike should just sponsor us all Our yes military spouse should get a whole bunch of free gear yes yeah. oh another tip if you have a dog go to the dog park because mm-hmm. i have made a lot of friends at the dog park too <laughs> <laughs> i actually made one today whose husband is in the same unit as my husband so <laughs> you always need people yep you will always meet people. Every place is an opportunity. Sure. Ooh, that's <laughs> another good one. You have three really good ones. Three. Even the dog park. Yep, the dog park. It's been great. And there's a nice little dog park off base, not too far from here. And it's great. I've made so many friends and my dog has a blast. So, you know, I just stand there talking to people and the dog's running around. There great. You go. And then he's destroying the house. So that's a win, win, win. Yes. <laughs> so if somebody wants to connect with you, what's a good way for them to do that? Probably Instagram. Um, it's, oh, uh, I think it's at Nordic underscore princess underscore two. <laughs> I'll link it. I'll link it. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's super random, but it's an old thing. And I just like, I've, I've thought about changing it, but everything's all taken. Like yeah. Rodriguez is my last name now. Like, I went from Thompson to Rodriguez. It's the same thing, just different culture. Yep. So. <laughs> All the struggles of an Instagram handle. Yes. <laughs> and I'm just like, whatever people know me as that now anyway. So who cares? It works. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I, Thanks for I, having me. I have, I seriously, like, I love this story so much. It's just so... One, it's so military spouse, like it's so waiting warrior, just all the hoops and like it oh, wasn't easy. It wasn't just as simple. No. I mean, it wasn't as simple as getting married and moving to a new place. It wasn't as simple as <laughs> moving to a new place and reaching out to somebody and then like you're on the team and it's, you know what I mean? Like yes, nothing has been simple, but also nothing was easy for you. Each step was Absolutely of- not. <laughs> having, to, having to like bolster up and yes. decide once again to just do it and keep on and now you yeah. have this you know not that like everything will be PG forever oh, absolutely. But, but now I'm prepared for it all because I started out just jumped right into the military ups and downs you don't know what's happening yeah. <laughs> figure it out <laughs> yep. basically, basically. <laughs> also small side note and I wish my the way my computer's hooked up, I can't, but it's been cracking me up this whole time that you have the exact same blinds. And I'm like, the blinds. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
Military housing. We military just military housing. <laughs> other side of the country, but we have the same blinds. We're just it's just <laughs> like, what connects us all across. Yeah, I'm trying, to, <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep a straight face of like you're never alone because nope. we all have the same crappy blinds. Yes. That and my dog just, loves to just like stick his nose in and just mess up. So whenever I try to open him, it's a whole thing. Hey. Yeah. Your dog and my kids. That's literally what June is doing right now. Like he is almost a year old. He'll be a year old in a couple weeks, and he's like probably 110 pounds. <laughs> That's really big. Yeah. But he's a giant baby. He's it's just sleeping right here. <laughs> That's funny. Anyways, sorry listeners. That's like a totally random. Note. Oh, it's just been cracking me up this whole time. Like, <laughs> Because it's not even like we're army and you're marines, and yet mm-hmm. we still have what's the it? same line. <laughs> Chris, what's his name in Parks and Black? He's Parks and Rec. It's like they are literally. The same <laughs> and I wish I could. I wish I could show you guys, but my computer's hooked up in a funny way. Anyways, total you know random side note to end on, but a good one. To <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, Lane and Waiting Warriors. Remember, just because it's hard, even if you're an introvert, even if you're shy, even if you're PCSing for the first time or the 10 millionth time, it doesn't have to be miserable. Have a good week, guys. If you are loving this podcast, I would really appreciate it if you would leave a review. Reviews help other Waiting Warriors out there find this amazing community and resource. It will go a long way and only takes like five seconds. Thanks so much.